Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? Welcome to Caribbean Perspective. So glad you can join us. The story that takes the lead in today's edition for Monday, 29th January 2024, and brought to you in association with our friends at Antillian Group. Next step for LIA 2020. Details after this important message. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all perils, big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so glad to see. Peace of mind, that's a service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. Welcome back. With LIAD 1974 out of the picture altogether, LIAD 2020 is in the process and should be up and running within the next three months. More in this ABS News item with Ursula Charles Jr. With the dust settling on Liat 1974 Limited, a new airline, Liat 2020, is on the horizon. After months of planning, negotiation, and millions of dollars of investment, an arrangement between the government of Antigua Barbuda and Earpiece Caribbean Limited will soon bear fruit. Principals expect operationalization within three months. We are well on our way, and we are just hoping that. Uh the gap between the closure of operations of 1974 Limited and the starting of operations of 20, Liat 2020 will not be too long mm. because we understand the, the anxiety out there in the traveling public. We understand the tremendous importance of Liat, 90, of Liat to the Caribbean. With the response of CDB in um, expediting the acquisition of the ATRs, um, I'm, I'm very confident that we could, we, we will be uh, commencing operation within the time, time, time frame that has already been um, determined. Before LIAT 2020 can acquire an air operator certificate from the Eastern Caribbean Civil Aviation Authority, the company must at least have one aircraft already licensed within the region. We had an update on negotiations for a fleet of aircraft to fly the LIAT 2020 banner. We come a stream from, uh, from APS Caribbean Limited, our joint venture partner. And uh, three will be almost immediate over a period of three months. Uh, we will have those on stream. Officials are still awaiting final sign-off from the Caribbean Development Bank for the purchase. The plans are also moving swiftly ahead for recruitment. Job advertisement will be, will be made um, available this week. Um, we're hoping, we're working with the media houses to ensure that um, those ads go out this week so people can start to apply. But having said that, and just touching back on the 74 employees, uh, what we're seeking to do is to publish, give the, publish those adver adverts internally within the LIAT 74 um, internal vacancy portal. So it gives employees um, that first um, chance or first choice of refusal, if you like. Salam, as the branding and imagery aspects are also progressing smoothly, he says the new logo will be deeply connected to the region. For ABS News, I am Ursula Charles Jr. Trinidad and Tobago's Commissioner of Police, Erla Christopher, has assured the Trinidadian public that the police service will be out in full force for carnival celebrations. This TTT News item has some details. Via immediate release, the police commissioner said she acknowledges the concerns raised by the TTPS Social and Welfare Association regarding the possibility of some police officers calling in sick for carnival duties. Commissioner Christopher said she understands that there may be dissatisfaction among some officers regarding issues such as back pay, salary increases and promotion disputes. She assures, however, the TTPS is actively addressing these concerns and taking proactive measures to ensure the smooth operation of carnival festivities. 
Commissioner Christopher also said additional staff have been deployed to expedite the payment of outstanding back pay and efforts are underway to address promotion disputes. And the Top Cup is assuring the public that the TCPS will be out in full force to maintain law and order, protect citizens and visitors, and ensure a festive atmosphere conducive to enjoyment and celebration. In line with the Argyle Declaration from last December, discussions between Guyana and Venezuela are ongoing. The foreign affairs ministers from both countries met in Brazil this past Thursday. Tiana Cole of HGP Nightly News provides more details in her report. One month after the historic December 14, 2023 talks between Presidents Dr. Efren Ali and President of Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro, who met in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and agreed to continue dialogue on agreed matters, and to refrain from escalating any conflict or disagreement. Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation Minister Yu Todd on Thursday led a high-level delegation to Brazil to advance talks with Venezuelan officials in continuation of the progress made one month ago. According to Paragraph 7 of the Declaration, the two states agreed to immediately establish a joint commission comprising of foreign ministers and technical persons from both countries. The commission addressed matters that were mutually agreed upon and an update will be submitted to the presidents of Guyana and Venezuela within three months. At a meeting, Guyana proposed an agenda and Minister Yu Todd, who was the head of Guyana's delegation, explained that Guyana's position regarding the land boundary between Guyana and Venezuela had not changed. Guyana maintained that the settlement of the controversy was properly before the International Court of Justice in accordance with the Geneva Agreement. Therefore, it must remain there until the court gives its final ruling on the merits of the case, which will be fully respected by Guyana. The Guyana government maintains that it will not undermine the judicial process or the Geneva Agreement by participating in any other means of settlement of the controversy as long as it is pending before the court. Minister Todd suggested that regional and hemispheric statements on peace and security could be a means of moving forward in the discussions. He also offered a number of areas that the two countries could discuss, including agreements already entered into between the two parties on drugs, jet A1 fuel, and matters related to food security. Guyana reaffirmed its commitment to the principle of the Argyle Declaration, particularly the maintenance of peace in Latin America and the Caribbean. The country looked forward to the next meeting to advance the relationship between Guyana and Venezuela. Minister Todd also expressed appreciation to the Foreign Minister of Brazil, H. E. Moro Vera, for facilitating the discussions while thanking representatives from CELAC and the United Nations as observers on January 25, 2024. The historic face-to-face -face meeting of the Guyanese and Venezuelan leaders came on the heels of concern by regional leaders after the Maduro government held a referendum on December 3, 2023, with the aim of annexing Guyana's Essequibo region which accounts for two-thirds of the country's territory. The talks were led by Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez of St. Vincent in its role as president pro temporo of CELAC and were supported by the Caribbean community CARICOM. Tiano Co reporting for the HGP Nightly News. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. In association with our friends at Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. Bahamian Prime Minister Philip Davis addresses the 2024 Bahamas Business Outlook. Carla Palmer of ZNS News has more. It's no secret that the business community is concerned about the high rate of crime currently plaguing our country. And it's an uneasiness that the Prime Minister and the Minister of Finance, the Honorable Philip Davis, is definitely aware of. He ensured his government's going to build a future of opportunity and security by creating a more dynamic economy and by making sure there are more ladders leading to success and ownership for those who start life in humbler circumstances. Prime Minister Davis used the Bahamas Business Outlook stage Thursday to further remind the country about his administration's anti-crime strategy and he's hoping to have all hands on deck. We still need parents and grandparents to create loving, safe homes. We still need strong and virtuous men to stand up as role models and mentors to offer the power of their example. We still need neighbors and communities who care 
Just because the plague of crime is not easily solved does not mean it is unsolvable. This is a battle we must win. And it is a battle we can win. And to win, the Prime Minister maintains policies that address poverty and guns and drugs and mental health are essential. When it comes to the economy, Prime Minister Davis detailed the government's determination and efforts to remain focused in its growth, like reforming the government's national investment policy, expanding family island ecotouristic developments, more access to capital and removing any existing barriers to doing business here in the country. At the end of last year, the IMF raised its projections for 2024. We welcomed a record 8 million plus visitors in 2023, and we are building on that success. We have lowered the unemployment rate from historic high levels to a rate not seen since before the 2008 recession. We anticipate that our economy will continue to add jobs this year. Prime Minister Davis is optimistic about his administration's pledge to elevate innovative and solution-oriented ideas to drive progress, bring about real change, and create a brighter future for all Bahamians. For The Bahamas Tonight, I'm Carla Palmer. In this unfolding story... Former St. Mary Western Member of Parliament, Joylan Silvera, made his first appearance in court on Thursday, 25th January, in downtown Kingston. Originally slated to appear at the St. Andrew Parish Court, the matter took an unexpected turn when it was heard in chambers surprising many. CVM's Nika Lewis reports. Mystique and mystery at the Home Circuit Court in downtown Kingston today. From the early scenes, the high-profile nature of the case was evident. The former People's National Party MP accused of murdering his wife, Melissa, appeared in court for the first time. On arrival, it was hard to distinguish Silvera from the other suspects who had court days. All marshaled into the court facilities, covering their faces. However, after hours inside, Silvera emerged from the building with a smile and a wave to those who were gathered on the outside. King's Counsel Peter Champagny is heading Silvera's defense team. And I can say that I indicated that we were served with 35 statements. We have read all of them, but there's further disclosure on the part of the prosecution. They are obliged to make all disclosure to the defense that has not been complied with as yet. But they are moving at a very good pace in terms of the information. And in essence, we are hoping to get some more information that will determine how we approach the case on the next occasion in terms of a bail application. There are concerns as members of the media, along with Silvera's family members, were barred from the court proceedings. The fact that the media was not allowed inside there and family members of Mr. Silvera, they too were not alone inside. Uh, It's a very sensitive um, matter, but at the same time, of course, the public's interest uh, is there. These family members coming in, they would be exposed. You would see them. You would be able to see them in plain view and bear in mind what we have said already in terms of the exposure of these persons. It would be a most unfortunate thing. Director of Public Prosecutions, Paula Lugalin, would not comment on the issue when our news team contacted her. Silvera is to return to court on February 8. Champagny says his client is maintaining his innocence. Let the court determine what the facts are in this case. Let the court decide and adjudicate on whether or not our client is guilty or innocent. We have our firm instructions, and he has maintained his position from day one that he's innocent. We have our job to do. Everyone is entitled to a fair uh, chance in terms of adjudication, entitled to fairness and treatment of justice overall. The police say upon their arrival to the crime scene, they noted efforts underway to renovate the space. They say that struck them as unusual at the time. Silvera was arrested a week ago after first ignoring requests to turn himself in. His current predicament marks a drastic escalation and pivot from what was first reported. 
Silvera drew sympathies, particularly from the political class, as early indications were that his wife died in her sleep on November 10, 2023. Then six weeks later, the bombshell. ACP Bailey confirmed to CVM News that the death was being treated as a murder. Nico Lewis, CVM News. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily regional news and more in association with our friends at Antillian Group. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all, perils big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so clear to see. Peace of mind, that's a service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity. Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. (laughs) 